brick has been used by humans for thousands of years. And it was originally designed to be held by the human hand and lay and build walls sequentially to build shelter, houses and protection. I'd like you to imagine that I've got a brick in my hand here, a common house brick. And as I hold that in my hand, say for a moment or two, I'm sure you'd agree with me that my hand starts to struggle to hold that. Let's then take that brick and project it, say, 30 metres up in the air, up towards the balcony there. And I want to hold that with incredible accuracy, within millimetres of where I want it to go. That's impossible for a human. That's actually a job for a machine. Let's then take that machine and that idea outside in the weather, the wind, the rain. And I'm sure you can also imagine that things get a little bit more problematic as that machine struggles to hold that brick in exactly the right location. I want to show you something now, and I've got a very unusual request. Has anyone brought with them a spare chicken? <laughs> anyone? Anywhere? Well, knowing that probably you didn't, here's one we prepared earlier, and I'd like you to give a soft round of applause to Andy and his chicken, Gertrude. So, Andy, what I'd like you to do is just gently rotate Gertrude's hips from side to side. And what I'm hoping you're going to see, animal forgiving, is that Gertrude's head stays precisely still. And it's these observations in nature that helps to inform us and give us this insight from curiosity. What insight can I gain from this? What does that mean? Thank you, Andy. That's fantastic. Thank you, Gertrude. <laughs> I work for a robotics company. And in this incredibly rich technical landscape that we're in today, we have electrical motors, big and small motors, which have incredibly precise controls as to when they start and stop. We have lasers that can give precision by pinpoint, sub-millimeter, even micron accuracy to give us distance measuring. And then we have unprecedented computational power, literally at our fingertips. And then if you overlay that with high-level computer programming, you can begin to imagine you can bring all of these things together with exceptionally complex models, routines, and instructions. Well, that's what we've done in our company. We've actually created our own digital chicken's head. And what you'll see here in a simulation right now, is as the boom moves from left to right, it's simulating the influence of what I talked about going outside, the wind, the rain, literally all over the place. But underneath, that brick is being held incredibly accurately still in its design location as it's suspended there. This is game-changing technology. In our company, we encourage engineers to play with Lego. And I can imagine, I can hear, oh, that's cool, where do I sign up? <laughs> but there's a seriousness to the play. The play was about understanding how bricks and blocks come together, how they nestle together, how you set a lay pattern, how you deal with corners, and how you deal with intersections. And it's actually quite a complex thing to deal with. But the objective was to digitize this process was to understand how could we put this into a virtual model and send that as instructions to our robot. And so we started to think, well, a wall does need to have the bricks cut. So how are you going to deal with cutting bricks? How are you going to give that flexibility in design? And so we started to challenge the traditional processes. And the more we thought about a brick and what is a brick today, we wanted to change that. And now, we could start to say, look, a brick that was previously designed to be held by the hand can now be managed by a machine. It can get a lot bigger, a lot bigger. And then you say, well, look, we're a bit conflicted here. If it gets bigger, it then gets heavier. So we actually want to have more with less. So we had to put the brick on a diet. <laughs> and by doing that, we had to think, well, we need to put holes in it. 
but we didn't want to put just random holes, knowing that we put a lot of effort into the digital model. So our engineers started to think about the symmetry of the holes. And if you have symmetry of the holes, you wanted to make sure if you had to cut bricks, that nothing was conflicted there. And they did that. And so what we designed is, as we nestled the bricks together, we realized by using the pure accuracy of the layhead, using our digital dynamic stabilization, we can make all those holes line up from the first course right the way to the last one. So we then said, well, we've got a dumb brick. How do we make this brick just a little bit smarter? So we decided, well, you can actually put the power cables down those holes, and you can put plumbing pipes down into those holes. And no longer do you do that and then cut, cut out chasing and make mess. It's a single event. But then you start to think about other opportunities. What else could we do here to make this slightly better? So we have opportunities to consider of putting rainwater captured from the roof and storing that in those holes, or putting batteries in those holes and using energy from solar panels and charging those batteries. So this starts to take a dumb brick that was passive in a wall to a brick that is active, that is actually engaged with the person and producing things for that person in that built environment. So we've collected all of these ideas and all of these themes, and we've put it into our Hadrian robot, which I'd like to introduce you to now. The Hadrian robot has been designed to serially deliver printed walls. You'd look at this and say, this is a bit like a 3D printer. We take blocks in the back, we deliver them. You'll see it's like a mini factory in the back of the machine. It decides where those bricks go from the digital model, and it allows them to be placed accurately, fast, and reliably in the digital location, but actually out on site. And that allows us to be pretty clever with what we're doing here you'll see that it applies that adhesive and glues the blocks together sequentially. Now, all of these events on site are digitized from the model. And that model is what creates the lay path. The human hasn't decided where those bricks go. The actual software has. So as we start to think about what can we do with that, how do we actually make a difference on the planet? What you'll notice about our robot, it can be sent anywhere. It can go in your local urban development, or it can go out into remote communities. It can go and assist in reconstructing after a disaster. We're profoundly disrupting the way the industry has operated in the past. And what I mean by that is that the link between the digital design undertaken in our desktops to the robot, there's no human intervention. It's the holy grail in construction almost, where digital design straight through to execution is what everyone wants in the industry. And that data set that we've designed in the digital model can be emailed to the Hadrian, wherever it is. And within minutes, you can build that design straight from the desktop. There's no human intervention. It's the holy grail in construction, almost, where digital design straight through to execution is stopping humans from being exposed to the dull, dangerous work that's carried out in construction. And in the safety industry, they would say that's the potential for a slow accident where people are undertaking repetitive tasks that fatigue the body over a long period of time and actually injure people. Because we've designed the blocks with holes or the bricks with holes in them, we're reducing material. Because we've designed the bricks to be cut, the actual software optimizes, or if you like, minimizes the amount of waste that you're going to create in the design. Right up front, every brick is an asset. This is profoundly changing how we could actually create shelter at an affordable price. As we start to think about our technology, where can we apply it? I guess we start to think about other opportunities in terms of maritime, other aspects of the construction industry and high-rise, where stabilizing building assets is a key thing, that you can start to roboticize those things and stop humans from being exposed to that damaging work or danger. Those opportunities are only restricted by our own imagination. And I profoundly believe that this technology can help change and increase the quality of life for humans as we can build shelter, we can start to employ it and deploy it in other more creative things. I think our technological journey has only just begun. Thank you.